Hello. Was that cool? <laughs> this is the top 10 hilarious game show bloopers from Watch Mojo UK. Watch Mojo UK. Top 10 hilarious game show bloopers. Um, I love game shows. I love bloopers. And I even love Watch Mojo. We asked 100 people to name a game you can play in bed. Okay, so this is like a Family Feud type game. Okay. Or maybe it is. Oh, it's called Family Fortunes. Was this before Family Feud? 1980? Game you can play in bed. Steve, I spy. From outlandish answers to red faced presenters. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting. In what sport does Fanny Clemmer compete for Germany? Show jumping down our picks for the top 10 hilarious game show bloopers Sluts. before we begin if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe for more great content i spy what kind of game can you play in bed what could you say there that wouldn't be funny i'm honestly trying to think like that joke just sets you up what could you say for this list we've gathered the best and jumping jacks funniest mishaps from some of britain's most popular game shows fingers on the buzzer please the nicknames Cheesemongers, Cherry Pickers, Bob's Own, The Emperor's Chambermaids, and The Immortals are or have been used for which groups of men? You miss bright homosexuals. <coughs> Number 10, let the face see the wall, take me out. Gotta be happy if Tess. I am happy, mate. <laughs> what do you say? See the wall, take me out. Gotta be happy if Tess. I am happy, mate. <laughs> The latest in a long line of lads from the Love Lift, this Take Me Out contestant is on cloud nine after getting himself a date. He and his lucky lady will soon be whisked away to the Isle of Fernando's, but they have to safely vacate. Odd couple. Take the set first, which is easier said than done. Lucky people, it's only the Isle of Fernando! This chap's so chuffed with how his days panned out, he forgets to stop gaping at the woman by his side and promptly face plants a partitioning wall. <laughs> Yeah, man, definitely. I feel great that a girl as good looking as Kaylee had picked me. Not even Pad. She picked him. Wow. Hey, good for him. Can you blame him for a, bla a lad for gaping at his woman? He love can cure that. That's good. He's not my usual type, but he seems really fun, and I think we'll have a lot of fun on the date. Number nine. There you go. Bare chested Merkel. There's nothing wrong with that. Eggheads. Which world leader was photographed bare chested in Siberia? In Siberia. In 2007, Vladimir Putin. In and again in 2009, riding a horse. Was it Angela Merkel? To what's typically one of the more civilized TV quizzes. <laughs> Kim Jong Il. And a rare moment where Jeremy Vine gets the giggles. The ordinarily composed presenter of Eggheads is pitching a question concerning topless world leaders, but the first of the potential answers leaves him laughing away <laughs> the tears. It's a great picture, this is it? Angela <laughs> Merkel. <laughs> Whoever wrote that joke knows what they did. Why is that? Who is that behind them? What the hell is going on? How does this game show work? What the heck? That's weird. It's like um, Wizard of Oz type thing. Oh, come on. Hold it together, Jeremy. You, you got to say Angela. Just professionally. Yeah? Just In all fairness, all three options offer quite Vladimir. an unusual mental image. Who knew Putin's macho displays would have such wide-reaching repercussions? Which world leader was photographed bare-chested in... <laughs> Let's just take a moment here. Let's just take a moment because I'm actually... now I'm just wondering how this game works. Right, I'm actually crying. crying He's asking a here. different group of people. Super spam, bullseye. Super sperm is the name of the game. Uh, no, bullseye is the name of the game. We roll with a retro clip next because you can't be a bit of bully. It's all eyes on the- A bit of what? Oki as Jim Bowen interviews his darting contestants as per usual. You're from Whitley Bear, Dev? Yes. Civil servant? Yes. Yeah. And then this happens. What's, what's your wife called? You've got a nickname for you. Uh, super sperm. <laughs> the guy's answer was worthy of Jim's bus fare home, but the presenter's reaction is what makes it. Because why not throw in a few swear words for good measure? We'll cut this bit, bollocks. <laughs> Glancing at his card, it's a definite case of here's what you should have said. Number seven, break <laughs> a leg, catch. I wonder how he got that nickname. 
can only imagine. Did it hit the ceiling or something? Phrase. Ladies and gentlemen, it's catchphrase. To Nick Weir's first day on the job, taking over from Roy Walker as presenter of the much-loved See What You See series, Catchphrase. Mm. But Weir's big Never gig began with a big break. He falls down the stairs mere seconds into filming the first Well, episode. look at these stairs. They're literally like a long stair, short stair, short stair, short stair, long stair. Episode ...and spends the rest of the I'd series down ambling around on crutches. Not ideal. But in best show business tradition... The How did he get a cast on that quick? ...show must go on. So welcome to Crutch Phrase. I'm Nick Weir and I'm plastered. Weir's isn't the only painful fracture on Prime TV either. Judith Stafford was partway through competing on the Krypton Factor in 1989 when she broke her ankle. Ouch. And the question now is, is she going to be able to finish this course? But uh, she really looks in great pain. Damn. She's still Eight. going with Number a six. broken Susie ankle, Dent's not a sprained ankle. It's straight up broken. Special spot, countdown. Susie's a mecca for game show mishaps, Countdown has given us countless gaffes and unscripted embarrassments. I'm curious about these game shows. I want to watch them. I love game shows. Yours, Kate. Erection. Sorry, has given what? us countless gaffes and unscripted <laughs> embarrassments. What's yours, Kate? Erection. Erection. <laughs> but we head directly to Dictionary Corner for one of the best. Susie Dent is already struggling to compose herself after a certain six-letter word. And Zate, Ariola. Yeah. <laughs> and How does this game work? Hewer does not let her on. Is this like a, a nighttime game? Lightly. It's just one, yeah. presumably, is it? Just one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah just... In America, they, they could only show this at night. Just one. Lightly. It's just one, yeah. presumably, is it? Just one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just one. No matter how she links to origins of where. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> the innuendo is inescapable. The whole thing's made even funnier by the host's deadpan delivery. Well, now then, Susie, it is your time. Every day, you have a special spot. <laughs> Number She's five, funny. Turkey, Family Fortunes. Yeah, we have the hundred people to name a game you could play in the bath. It, once again, in the bath. Annette. Scuba diving. <laughs> <laughs> Another treasure trove for TV's funny. At least that makes sense. I can't think a game you play in the bath. Okay, what would people say? I, I what would actually be the first choice? A game you can play in the bath. I guess it would be like um like Rubber Ducky. That's probably the number one game. Yes, no. Rubber Ducky. It's not even a game. Family fortunes requires speed of thought and a logical mind. But sometimes your mind just goes blank. Hello, Bob. It's <laughs> nice to see you sober. Take this guy on a high having reached the final round. But then his brain <laughs> turns to turkey. Bob gives the same answer to his first oh, no. three questions and bizarrely blows his family's chances of winning big oh, no. money. Name something people take with them to the beach. Towel. Turkey. The, th <laughs> the first thing you buy in a supermarket. Milk. Uh, turkey. <laughs> a food often stuffed. Turkey. <laughs> it's a comic capitulation. Best served. <laughs> the producers need a raise there. I feel like the producers had to have taken that third question and swapped it out real quick. Because what other food do you stuff? Turkey. <laughs> it's a but why would you take a turkey to a beach? Comic capitulation, best served with veg and gravy. The the answer got progressively more better. Isn't that weird? You would think that the first question would be the, the one it made sense to. Like he said it, it made sense to the first question. Then from there, it made less sense. But it went from making no sense to making perfect sense. B. Now, you've got a chance here of making 1,000 pounds in two weeks. Two weeks in Turkey. Number four, the empty box, deal or no deal. You guys have deal or no deal as well? Do they still show this? What kind of box is that? You cannot be serious. You guys have cardboard boxes? Here in America, it's like a gold briefcase. What's he gonna do? It's held together by a piece of scotch tape. 
Welcome to the Dream Factory, where Noel, his players, and his pilgrims have a quarter million in their sights. Okay. Deal or No Deal proved massively popular in the late 2000s, as players aimed to beat the banker by honestly the dumbest game ever, but I loved watching it. Opening boxes filled there's, with cash sums. There's almost no, there's nothing to the game. Yeah, deal, no deal, no deal. You always just say no deal. Everybody, nobody, nobody takes the deal. But the familiar format fell to pieces when one contestant revealed an empty container. <laughs> Cue a sharp intake of breath and Noel heading backstage as the tension increased before. Guys, what was the budget on this UK deal or no deal? I'm sorry, but this is bizarre. I'm pretty sure my high school put on a deal or no deal and it, it looked like this. <laughs> or the blunder no smoothed over in typically dramatic fashion. We have an empty box. No. Guys. <laughs> There is nothing in there. Number three. It's literally a cardboard words, box. Countdown. <laughs> we forgot to put the number in. Oh, what did they do from there? She's gagging for a hard one. All she gets is... <laughs> We've already made an awkward visit to Dick. I mean, I just have to show this. Just because I feel like an asshole being like, oh my gosh, that that is really like low production. But look at America's. I'm sorry. But we may have worse healthcare. That is literally a fake version. Okay. Here's the real one. We may have, you know, worse education, <laughs> worse healthcare, but our deal or no deal kicks the shit out of yours. Look at look at what we got. Look at the briefcase. Look at the holders of the briefcases. <laughs> Okay. Corner, but it's at the letters board where countdown oh. truly excels for today's list okay what's your i look like uh um ian heckock from smash corner but it's at the letters board where <laughs> countdown truly kind of. excels for today's list wiz khalifa okay what's yours dave <laughs> and tom i went for awaken how much fun can you really have with nine random letters well a fair bit actually from toilet humor to sex terms and all out obscenities, it's tough to pick a favorite rude word. But Bumhole takes it for sheer silliness. What have we got in the corner? Anything interesting there? Ah, uh, where should we go? <laughs> yes, Janet. I can't say it. Okay. Bumhole. <laughs> I'll get this over with quickly. Bumhole is there. <laughs> all courtesy of Susie once again. And they even have Rachel Riley spell it out for us. So it's going to be one of those days, is it? <laughs> Number two, Fanny Schmeller, The Chase. Oh, I love this game. Oh my God. I only watched it for one day and I watched it like for 12 hours straight. But does Fanny- Is this guy as smart as as it seems he is? Schmeller. Or does he have a wire in his ear? Compete for damn. Germany. A, swimming. B, show jumping. Or C, skiing. For the most part, The Chase is prime cook quizzing but Bradley Walsh does lose his composure now and again. Special mention for the contestant who broke her chair before breaking wind. Well, she's just... You know what, love? What just destroying the set. <laughs> but the famous... Damn, that's that's rough. Fanny Schmeller is today... That sucks. You fart straight into the microphone on live TV. He's runner-up. Bradley reads the name, but barely makes it through the next few minutes. Even the governess, Anne Hegarty, gives in eventually. <laughs> We're gonna make a rule now, never say a name again! <laughs> oh, Hold oh, on. Oh, oh. I'll be straight down. <laughs> that is a different person up there. The call in the morning, if that was my name. <laughs> he did offer an apology to the former Olympic skier sometime afterwards, but this clip will never likely be forgotten. The correct answer is... Oh, we skiing fancy not knowing that. We should have should have known that. Number one, Snake Charmer. I'm just. Is this a different game than what I thought it was? Because I was thinking it was the game where the guy up top is is a big guy and he's really smart and they try to like uh, out out uh, outdo him in in trivia. I guess that's, I don't know if that's the same game, because that was not the same person. Catchphrase. Please take a square. On the right. Five seconds, here we go. Who else but Roy Walker to see us out with this classic clip? The bonus catchphrase is a simple idea. Pick a square, reveal more of the picture. But okay. here we see how that concept can cause chaos. 
With every square removed, this image gets increasingly risque. Can you solve that? Here we go. First, the hand movements, then Mr. Chips's hat and his overly happy friend. Oh no! The audience are in fits, but Roy does a sterling job of keeping it together until it's finally solved. That's right. Watch your screens, concentrate. Here we go. How could it be? Oh, look away. Oh. Do you agree with our picks? <laughs> Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo UK and subscribe for more great content. <laughs> Looked like he was charming two snakes. That's funny. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. <sighs> that was good. Watch Mojo UK. Check them out. Small and up and coming YouTube channel. The link down below. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Goodbye.